does last a little bit longer. Um, it also handles slightly higher temperatures in the sense of not breaking down. Um, another thing I want to touch on briefly with our winterization stuff, if you plan on winterizing a unit but still using the heater, that is an option. But you have to be concerned or clear that your antifreeze can handle above 185 mm -hmm. degrees because that's the temperature of your heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. It can cause boiling and weird noises and sometimes your, your air pocket errors that I'm sure at least one of you has come across where your all these systems are shut down because there's air pockets somewhere and you kind of have to do the tip game. What? Come I've those. yet to have that in six Ooh. years. <laughs> okay. So maybe it's just some of my newer customers. Uh, we've done, we've definitely dealt with a couple. Um, driving down the road, sometimes we'll get air pockets in our Aldi system. Um, if you take your tongue jack, drop it to the ground, lift up the butt of the trailer, and kind of do that a couple times, it usually alleviates that problem. <laughs> uh, you're basically just shaking the air to the top. Yeah. Uh, it vents out. But if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna continue to use uh, your heat in winter weather while not using your water, just make sure that your the antifreeze that you pick is gonna boil one above 185. Uh, I don't know if that answered your question as far as what else we got. Uh, so back to the black dog. Uh, you may have answered this already. How often should you get it exchanged? Uh, we usually recommend every couple of years. Okay. Um, it is right at least right on the market right around 500 and change. So there's no the real urgency to what? Do Even with the do uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we, we err on the side of caution for that kind of stuff because we don't want to destroy your Aldi system, which is, you know, to be fair, <laughs> probably a sixth of the cost of your trailer. Mm. I've, I've never priced out a new one because they don't really go bad, truthfully. They're very solid systems. Like I said, they've been around since 1949, so they've been of kind of dialed in. They know what they're doing. So uh, um, is there any urgency to changing it out for the green? Or could we wait till You could wait years? until your interval, for sure. Okay. I, I don't think it's bad, it's just better. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. What's the old color? Yellow. Yellow, yeah. It's almost kind of see-through, too. But what you can't do is mix them. Yeah. Do the 20, it'll, 20 have the new one? Uh, most of the 21, 21s do. It, it's hard for me to say that all of them do, but they should. And I believe that you camp, they were switching it out? Yeah, they were. I was, I was, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure I heard that from you. Um, I, I have the new stuff. Right, but you so guys... they checked for me to see which one I had, and they went um, off my bin. Yeah. So I think um, if if you have a question about whether or not you've got the new glycol or the old glycol, based on the bin number, they can tell you. Or you can look in your overflow tank. Yeah. <laughs> if you can find your overflow tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Well, we should all have screwdrivers. That's, yeah. that's an important part of this whole process. So the old glycol is red? It's Hello. Yellow. Oh, yellow. Yeah. Our antifreeze is going to be... I guess I haven't seen it's what like, I have. Then. If you look at it, it almost looks clear. That's what you hear. Uh, but it does have a yellow tinge to it when it's like in a bottle. But in your overflow, it's going to look basically clear. Else? This is the first time we had the camp route where we're thinking we're probably going to come to Pina. Okay. So to make sure it worked, I put Pina out there for the first time. Uh, one problem was it's already 80 something degrees in the trailer. So okay. It's going to be hard to take it on. Correct. This thing has to work all day. I start talking to Rick. That's how it always um, comes. I'm sure mine will blow up at some point. My question to you is I, I turned it on, I did. Everything that book says to do. Yep. I heard something bubbling and you know away, and then I could hear, I could feel heat coming out of the vent. Like you know, taking my hands underneath the seats, and my, I never felt that the heat come up. <laughs> okay. Is it a good bet that I have the heat on anyway? I guess I would, it takes a while for you to feel it. Yeah, it certainly could. I, I'm gonna say I don't have a ton of experience actually heating a trailer. It's just in the process of turning it off. If that makes any sense. I basically get in trailers after they're fixed or when they're broken. Convection. Never you just have to be patient. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think if a lot of this whole world, a little bit, is being Heat patient rises, for a lot of things. It's a passive my, system. My, yeah. yeah, exactly. It doesn't my, have any fans. I sleep just, right on top of the Aldi, <laughs> and it's toasty <laughs> all the time. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really seem like a bad place to be. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like it's just a nice little, yeah. Well, yeah. if you have hot water running, the hot water heats the unit itself. 
Yeah. So that's exactly what happens. That's why I keep the hot water off unless I'm ready to take a shower. Right. Because your your AC is not going to keep up. With right. You're basically trying to run AC with your heat on okay. if you have your hot water heater on because it's it's all the, yeah. Underneath there's a uh, like a valve that's um, I think it's an Aldi. It has a valve that if it gets um, too much pressure, it releases. Yep. So that's just an automatic thing. We don't have to touch it. Correct. You but pressure water may belt. run out um, in the back part of your of your trailer Correct. that so the Aldi is saying, I don't need this. Water's expanding. It's too much room. I need to get rid of something. Correct. Yeah. Yep. We all know that water. That's kind of a scary water thing. Water and steam. Yeah. <laughs> it, it will condensate a little don't bit like too. Don't like to see water. You're going right. to see a little bit of water out of there no. normally. Yeah. You do see a lot of Remember water that? out of there. There's yeah. a one-way check valve in that corner. That may be an issue. Yeah. We've seen a couple of those go. If I remember correctly, they're about 20 bucks. You can get it from New Camp. Um, I don't know if they'll... Well, they're not you can't get anything directly from New Camp anymore. We call, have to call you guys. You can call Tim and serve. Yeah. Tim or Nick. Uh, what else we got? Anybody? A wheelbarrow repacking. So like our 16... It's never been done, but I bet that, that vehicle's got less than 500 miles on it. That one is one of the ones that I'm not like. You can't recommend that tires and wheel bearings. The tires get replaced every two years, regardless of mileage. And then wheel bearings get packed every, I want to say it's 1,500. Yeah. Um, which Jeez, that's no other actually trip. less. Yeah, I think it's 700. Well, it's, because we have the bearing bodies. So yes. that grease, it's just a grease gun. You put it in, you squirt it, you've got it. Now oh. completely removing all your bearings and repacking them is really unnecessary on a regular basis oh. at all. That's yeah. why we have the sealed bearing bodies. Correct. Yeah, so basically it's more of an inspection and throwing a little bit of grease there. I don't recommend it usually. Like I, Do it I'm more time. than willing to help a customer out, spend their money. Don't get me wrong, like I am in a, I'm in part of a business. But usually in that situation, if you haven't traveled, you know, coast to coast, then I usually you're fine. And bearings have telltale signs when they're going bad. They make noise. They vibrate. Stuff that you should be checking anyway. Um, you know, jack up the trailer, check the wheel bearings, see if they have a ton of play. If they do, then either give us a call or grab a YouTube and learn how to do some wheel bearings. <laughs> it's not too crazy. Um, if you get a single axle trailer, you can definitely pick it up with a floor jack. So that brings us to jacking the trailer. Correct. There's a lot of people say where and where not to jack the trailer. And I don't really know where to jack it up. I am not a fan of jacking it up from the axle uh, tube itself uh, because they can't bend. So the frame, basically, right? The frame holds the rest of the trailer up. Yes. I seem pretty comfortable with that. That's typically. How I felt, yeah. Obviously, keep an eye out for any bits that you would crunch mm -hmm. mechanical, electrical, fiberglass, any of that stuff. You know, once again, I think my main bullet point is use common sense. So I, I bring a floor jack with me every time we travel because I have one. Correct. And that's going to do the job. But a lot of people have like bottle jacks or scissor jacks. And yeah. It's got to be difficult for some oh, yeah, I would because agree of the height. Correct. Especially on a boondock. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Tire to get a I mean, a floor oh, jack, if you have them, is, is great. Uh, obviously, they're not the lightest things to carry around. They do make like racing ones. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. I got one. <laughs> they're still not light. No. No, but they're they're definitely lighter than my two-ton floor jack. Yes. Head. But that's Head where bolt. you want to use your yellow stacks to put the jack yeah. on the yellow stacks. If you have If you have a boondock, yeah. yeah. Uh, but every single manual tells you from New Camp where you should be placing your jack. Okay. Every single one. My, uh, my vehicle does not have a spare. It doesn't have a lug wrench. It doesn't have anything. All it has is a compressor. Okay. It's got a little, it's a Mitsubishi. Okay. It's got a little compressor. Yep. And, it's and got probably a, some fix and flat. And it's got yeah. some gushy stuff you put yep. in there. So I'm thinking if I ever had a flat, I'm going to do that to the trailer. I mean, why bother, you know, jeopardizing it until so you get it to a place that'll do it right? The fix and flat stuff we have to be careful about because it will eat the inside of your tire. Yeah. Um, so that is a 100% a temporary fix to get you to the next place. Yeah. So if you have a blowout, it's also not gonna handle anything probably bigger than, if you have a puncture that's bigger than the size of a pencil, Yeah. Um, it, it'll just flow right out of that, it won't yeah. handle it. 
Um, so that's something to consider. But if you do blow out a tire and you want to use fixed flat and a compressor, it'll handle most of your regular nail punctures and that kind of stuff, but you aren't going to end up tossing that tire mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, in your, on the vehicle side, just want to also warn you that it'll also usually mess up your tire pressure sensor. Okay. Oh, yeah. So okay. instead of having a spare, you probably just spent 400 bucks. So between a tire and a valve stem. Mm -hmm. How many miles do you use?